These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Basically, at this point in the course, what you're moving into is modern physics. Uh, and every, most of the stuff you've done previously is classical physics. Uh, and the difference between those is classical physics basically matches common sense. Uh, not always, sometimes it's not just common sense, but people can kind of feel the common sense of classical physics. Things in classical physics behave kind of the way, the way we're used to them. However, in modern physics, things seem to defy common sense no matter how hard you think about them. In modern physics, there's things that just seem weird. Uh, so we already saw one part of modern physics, which was relativity. Uh, and what we saw there was that, for example, um, uh, measures of time and distance and simultaneity can be relative. Uh, and it doesn't really matter how hard you think about that, that, that should always strike you as kind of weird. Uh, for example, it means uh, kind of, if people measure how long a spaceship is from inside the spaceship, they'll get a different measurement than the people outside the spaceship. Or to the people watching Seinfeld inside the spaceship, it might only seem to take uh, 23 minutes, but to people outside the spaceship, Seinfeld seems to take a lot longer. That shouldn't seem like common sense. That's very weird. However, remember, all of those weird things only happen at very high speeds, and that's the reason we don't normally notice them. That's what's called the correspondence principle. That's something you might need to, to use uh, an explanation uh, on the exam. The correspondence principle is that the predictions of modern physics should match classical physics when you're in kind of ordinary situations. Modern physics should not predict um, uh, anything that's different than common sense would predict as long as you're under kind of ordinary, everyday conditions. So modern physics predicts that time and distance are relative, but only, under, uh, only when you're moving at extraordinary speeds. Uh, we know that when you're moving uh, pretty slowly, modern physics says that the, the time and distance should be uh, measured almost the same for everybody. So it's only when you're moving at very high speed that the effect of modern physics seems to be important, the effect of relativity. Otherwise, so the idea is that modern physics corresponds to the classical common sense view when you're in ordinary, everyday conditions. Okay. All right, and now we're going to be looking at some quantum mechanics ideas. So remember that relativity is really only important when you're moving at very high speeds. Well, quantum mechanics tends to be only important when you're focusing on very small objects. Quantum mechanics tends to be important just when you're looking at things that are very small, roughly speaking. So relativity is for very high speeds, speeds close to the speed of light, and quantum uh, physics is for when you're looking at things with very small mass. Uh, when things have kind of ordinary masses, like baseballs and desks, the predictions of uh, quantum mechanics are pretty much the same as common sense. That's the correspondence principle again. Uh, the uh, quantum mechanics kind of corresponds to common sense when you're, uh, at, when you're working with ordinary masses. It's only teensy tiny objects like uh, electrons and protons and atoms that are far outside our ordinary experience that have weird results. All right, so what are the weird results that we're going to focus on? So today there's going to be two weird results. Um, one weird result is wave-particle duality, which I think we've already started talking about, wave-particle duality. Um, so the common sense view is that some things are waves and some things are particles. That's the classical view. Uh, but the modern physics view is that everything has both wave and particle characteristics. The modern physics view is that everything has both wave and particle characteristics, and that, that should seem weird because that doesn't really match our ordinary experience. In ordinary life, um, some things are particles, like baseballs. And some things are waves, like, say, water waves. Uh, but you wouldn't normally expect them to be both a wave and a particle when you're looking at them in a certain light. All right, but uh, it turns out in the modern physics view that everything has both wave and particle characteristics. So, um, and so we'll have to, to, to go through and look at that. However, remember, we've already seen that oftentimes that doesn't matter because, um, so, so when do the wave characteristics matter? When the wavelength is big or small? Yeah, so the wave characteristics really only matter when you're at uh, relatively large wavelengths. Uh, we've seen previously that when the wavelength is small, it does, the wave characteristics tend not to be too important. Well, it's gonna turn out that um, when things have relatively large masses, they're gonna have pretty small wavelengths. And therefore, even though they have wave characteristics, the wave characteristics are not that important. Big mass, small, small wave. Yeah, that's right, we'll see, we'll see that in a second. All right, 
right. And the other uh, weird thing we're going to talk about is quantization. Um, in modern physics, things are quantized rather than continuous oftentimes. So we have to see what's the difference between quantized and continuous. This is kind of like when we talked about relativity. When we talked about relativity, we had to see what was the difference between absolute and relative. Well, now we have to see what's the difference between quantized and continuous. So something quantized can only take on specific discrete values. Something quantized can only take on specific discrete values. So quantized is pretty similar to the word discrete. Whereas continuous means that you can take on any of the values in a continuum. So to give an example, let's say we were talking about, say, um, how many children a family has. Well, what's the smallest possible number of children the family can have? Zero. Good. Most people say one. But now you're thinking like a mathematician. Uh, certainly that's my, my situation. I'm, I'm still at the uh, number of children equals zero point. Okay. So zero children. Um, and then the next number would be? One. Then two. Then three. So there's a whole diff bunch of different numbers of children that you can have. But this is not continuous because you can't take on values in between these numbers. You couldn't have 1.5 children or 2.5, uh, except as kind of a joke. Yeah. Um, so uh, unless we're joking, we're, we're saying that uh, you have to have a quantized number of children. So there's nothing bizarre about something being quantized. Um, some things it's natural to think of as quantized. But now let's think about, say, how much sleep I'm going to get tonight. Well, I might get, say, four hours, or I might get eight hours, or maybe up to 12 hours, uh, maybe to give a reasonable range somewhere between zero and 12 hours. Well, would that be quantized or continuous? That's really continuous because I could get eight hours, or I could get 8.5 hours, or 8.56 hours, or 8.567893 hours. Uh, there's really no limit uh, to how many decimal points you can put in on exactly how much time I spent sleeping. So it really seems like I can sleep for any uh, amount of time in between these two regions. So we would say that the number of children that a family has is quantized, but it seems like time is continuous. Okay, so it's common sense that some things are quantized and some things are continuous, but what modern physics shows is many things that seem like they should be continuous are really quantized. Many things that seem continuous are really quantized. We'll see the examples uh, as we go.